welcome back friends i've been uh, getting a lot of uh, requests for making video on lucent zipper so there we go the video on lucent zipper now what is lucent zipper in first place lucent zipper is nothing but a structural motif of protein there are different structural motifs for proteins this is coiled coiled domain helix turned helix motif and there are different varieties like that so lucent zipper is one of that structural motifs of protein right which protein many different proteins this is a structural motif this never means one particular protein this is a structural motif structural segment that that is found in different proteins and mainly most of the cases those proteins are eukaryotic transcription factors remember transcription factors have a very very important role to play in eukaryotes rather than prokaryotes so they have other roles in prokaryotes also but in eukaryotes they are very much important in transcription so all these different types of transcription factors they share a common structure of a single domain n terminal as well as c terminal the domain that is present of leucine zipper now why leucine zipper is present and why what is its importance that we will be studying now but the thing here is that this leucine zipper why it is called as leucine zipper it is also called as leucine scissor so we'll be looking at that why it's called a scissor also so leucine zipper is simply it's a dimeric protein mainly uh, so two monomer with two alpha helices so actually it looks something like this uh, if i draw something like this and another alpha helix and it continues something like this this is let's say n terminal c terminal it looks something like this made up with two different alpha helices criss cross with each other i have a scissor in my hand just look 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 like this so this is one is this is one uh, alpha helix this is another alpha helix they are hold together with this uh, middle side so they are hold like this so now they can act like a scissor now whether they act like a scissor let's see it here so in this case each of those alpha helices can uh, arrange for 30 to 50 or 60 uh, amino acid segment containing section now in those 30 amino acids let's say this is a 30 amino acid long uh, protein in that 30 amino acid in that case what we see leucine to be repeated continuously in every seventh amino acid residue that is why it is called as leucine zipper simple a protein alpha helix now in that alpha helix every seventh residue is a leucine and that leucine is found in the dimerization domain means if you look at the structure it is not dimerized like this if you look at here this is not how it's dimerized it is dimerized just crisscross way like this now there is particular side of dimerization this is the dimerization this is the dimerization domain and from here in the c terminal portion if you look at all the c terminal portion we can find this domain this is a c terminal and here the presence of leucine is the most okay now if you look here why if, if i draw this a structure something like this let's say this is a leucine and let's say here this is a uh, these are two different alpha helices if you look at cross section top view if you look at here top view you'll find this is a leucine this is a leucine rest of the there are different amino acids outside so you see two leucines that are interacting and this leucines and all this all of this this one and this one these are hydrophobic amino acids. These are hydrophobic amino acids. They are present in the internal side. And that forms this hydrophobic core, which helps in the assembly of two alpha helices together. So due to the presence of leucine zipper, in this zipper means zip is actually the presence of the zipper, zipper means there are two different lines and they will be joined together by the presence of zipper. Right? So just like here, the leucine is helping to zip two alpha helices together by creating the 
hydrophobic domains. Those hydrophobic co-region will interact by the hydrophobic interaction and they will keep on holding with each other. And rest of the proteins outside, rest of the amino acids outside, they are hydrophilic in nature. So they can face the water and sol solutes actually. All this side, this side, every side. On the middle only, hydrophobic. So that's what we see here. Right? So now, if we look at here very carefully in this in this scissor, let's say these are the black section, these are the C terminal, this is the N terminal. Now the idea here in the N terminal is this N terminal contains the DNA binding domain. Remember, they are most of the time transcription factors, so they are definitely intended to bind with the DNA because the transcription factor definitely needs to sit on DNA activate certain aspects, certain part of the gene. Now here, this N terminal sections are DNA binding domain and they can specifically bind to the major group. So they have a sequence specific binding and that sequence here is ACGT. This is a stretch of sequence. If this sequence are present repeatedly there, in those locations, this leucine zipper protein with the help of the N terminal sequence bind properly. The major group interaction with the ACGT sequence in the DNA. That is done by this leucine zipper N terminal. So once they are attached there, for this attachment to occur properly, they need to have this conformation, this structure like a scissor, like, like this, not a closed like this. So let's say this is the DNA, this, this finger is my, uh, this is the DNA, let's say this is the major group. And if this is the leucine zipper, as you see, this, this black side is made up with more leucines. If I draw here, this is made up with more leucines. This is the N-terminal domain. So it is made such a way that in N-terminal domain, it will interact with the major group of the DNA. So now it is interacting. For it to be interacted properly, there should be a proper arrangement of those two N-terminals. And that arrangement is possible due to the hydrophobic interaction between this leucine zipper region. So as the leucine zipper is very close, in such a way, due to the hydrophobic interaction here, it places itself properly to the DNA, attach itself properly to the DNA, and then start adding all these things and start the initiation of transcription in eukaryotic DNA. So that's how the leucine zipper works. Though it is found also in prokaryotes, but mainly uh, it is a feature of eukaryotic cells. And uh, there is another name for this uh, structure that is called the coiled, coiled coil domain because coiled coil domain means uh, alpha helix is itself a coil and if there are more than one alpha helix uh, attaching with itself by any means we call it a coiled coil domain. Uh, so this is another example of coiled coil domain. So that's in a sense is using zipper. I know that is helpful for you. So please uh, subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, put some comment there and share this video with your friends in social networks because there are not many videos about Lucent Zipper. So share it, learn this and also learn to share. So thank you. All the best.